So this video is if you're new to Out of the Park Baseball. This is Out of the Park 21, and I do already have a tutorial for beginners video out there, but I want to do a different one for a few reasons. One is on some of my early videos, the volume was a bit low and had some people say it was a bit hard to hear, so I adjusted some stuff on my mic settings. So I wanted to redo some of my tutorial videos uh, to make the volume a little bit better. Two, my early videos, I really didn't plan what I was going to say. I did, maybe expected like a dozen people to watch them, but my first tutorial video now has like over 12,000 views. And to be honest, it was a little sloppy. I didn't plan it out. I said the word um, like every third word, which I'll still say, but less. And just the presentation, there are some things that I wish I presented a little differently that I thought might be helpful to reword. And also I have other tutorial videos now that I can reference in this one where I can point to people if they want to go into more detail on certain things. And I also just want to change some of the things I said. So this is just basic settings and strategy if you're new to the game. Out of the park baseball, it's a really deep game. It's going to take you a while to learn it. I think I've played maybe like five different versions of it. There's still things I've learned in this version that I didn't know in other ones. And if you're doing your first simulation your first franchise mode whatever you want to call it it you know you consider it a learning experience you're probably going to want to restart it after a year or two once you learn some things and how to better run your team um so in this i'm assuming that you're starting just as a in a normal major league baseball universe of course you can come up customize your league to be whatever it wants but this is assuming you're just starting at an original um, start date of 2020, you know, you can see up here on March 2020, and this is just some basic settings and then strategy I would recommend looking into as you try to like digest this massive game. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the manager options. And in this, I'm the general manager. My role is the general manager of the Cubs. And you can make yourself the manager and GM, just the manager or the general manager. I like general manager mode the best. And you can also, if you're learning the game and don't want to be fired, say you're playing, you know, with your favorite team and you want to learn the game, playing with them, you can check that if you want. No shame in that. We don't need commissioner mode on though. And so the first thing is look at these team settings. So set lineups and depth charts, set, set your pitching staff. This is for your major league team. I think it's fine to let your manager do this for a bit. As I learned the game and had my own preferences, I, I now control that as general manager, which I think is also kind of how Major League Baseball is moving towards. The front office has more and more say over these things and the manager is just kind of implementing what the front office wants. So this is fine to start with your manager if you're just learning the game in the general manager mode, but maybe think about trying to learn it. You're probably gonna wanna manage your demotions, promotions, and injured list, all that, instead of letting the, the um, AI do it. Transactions, signing free agents, releasing players. If you're doing general manager mode, Control that. Same with trades, drafting players. Those are two of the more fun things to do as general manager. So leave that selected to you. Setting the budgets is kind of a personal preference. I, you know, I consider it pretty important to control it. But if you want to learn the game, not the end of the world. Signing international amateurs. Again, I think it can become important. But if you're just learning the game and it's too much, let your assistant GM do it. That's fine. Signing and uh, firing team personnel. Another thing you're going to want to learn pretty quickly because it's a pretty important thing. Minor league personnel. It's important, but if you want to kind of, as you're learning the game, I think that's fine to let your assistant GM do it at first. Major league, uh, or I'm sorry, minor league free agent signings and releases, you want to manage this. You don't want the AI releasing guys in your minor league system because they will sometimes make random decisions that, that are not good. Uh, minor league promotions, demotion strategy. This is something that I would say let your assistant GM start with this and and as you learn the game move to do it yourself if you want because you know you might have five six seven minor league teams that you're promoting and demoting guys for it's a lot if you i have a player development video you can check out on how you can control specific players uh, their promotions and demotions and then let the assistant gm do most of it but in general it's fine to let your assistant gm do this while you're managing the game but i think something you want to learn it becomes a pretty important and fun part and minor league lineups and depth charts, whatever. Just let your minor league manager do that. It, you know, That's way too much to manage the lineups of multiple teams. So then we're going to go here to the game settings to look at a couple things. And the first thing here is we're going to look at the player rating scales. You can set these however you want. And I prefer 20 to 80 for the rating scales uh, of, you know, this will be our guys 
power rating, a guy's contact rating, his velo- you know, his movement on a pitch. And, and if you've looked at player pages, you know what I'm talking about. I prefer 20 to 80, and I also prefer the overall potential rating to be 20 to 80 in increments of five, basically because this is how baseball scouts and management talk about players when they're when they're rating them and scouting them is a 20 to 80 scale if you want to know more about that just go google um, i don't know fan graphs 20 to 80 scale and i'll talk to you about what that is where basically 50 is average uh so yeah i that's what i like but maybe it's more intuitive for you to have a 1 to 100 scale or a 1 to 20 scale for rating things you know that's fine do do whatever you want there's not really a right or wrong way to do that I just like that because it's more like realistic to real baseball. AI settings, leave these trade difficulties where they are to start. Uh, Average trade difficulty with neutral preference. If you decide that you're getting too good at the game, make it very hard trading difficulty and heavily favors prospects. That's going to make the trading a good bit harder. That's what I play on now that I've played a few different versions of the game and I feel like I kind of know things that I can do to not trick the AI but take advantage of them. And it's not a criticism of the AI. It's just any game that you spend uh, hundreds of hours playing, any game, computer game, video game, you're going to learn how to beat it different ways, right? So this is just another way to make it more challenging. Player evaluation AI settings is something I say just ignore for now while you're digesting the game, but come back to this. And this is basically how the AI uh, evaluates players. Their scout ratings, the current year stats, previous year stats. I like to put the ratings weight here at about 50%, 40 to 50%, and then divvy up between the year stats for the rest with the current year stats being the heaviest. So look in the out of the park manual if you want a deeper explanation on that. Ignore it for now. But something definitely to keep in mind if, if you are really liking the details of the game and want to dive in more. So we're going to go to League Settings here, and we're going to check out the rules. This is set up to work as Major League rules were set to start the 2020 season, non-pandemic. Um, and so you can give both leagues a designated here if you want. Again, something to leave alone probably if the game feels like a lot, which it is, to learn. But you can come here and basically customize your Major League Universe and make it whatever you want. So now we're going to go over to Options. And one thing to check out here is, do you want to enable automatic evolution of the league? Which means all these things checked here will happen kind of randomly, naturally, over time. You know, if expansion's checked, you might get an expansion draft one year. uh, Or a team might relocate. Or, you know, the designated hitter rule might change in one of the leagues. And you can always undo something if you don't like how the league's evolving. But just think about, do I, you know, do I want the computer to randomly tell me, you know, two new teams are joining the league? Or do I like my Major League Universe to mirror the real life one? So one thing just to keep an eye on and not necessarily something you have to dive into right away. But it's there and it will affect your league. So now we're going to look at a few basic strategy settings just to keep in mind as you get started. I'm going to go to the front office here, and we're going to look at some a couple budget things to start. So this money for free agents is basically how much money you have to spend on players in the current season. The money for extensions is basically how much money that you have to spend on players in the following season. And when you start the game here in early March 2020, some of the, these budgets are going to be adjustable until opening day, these three budgets right here. And they will lock on opening day, and every season after the first one, they will unlock once the season ends after the World Series, and they will stay unlocked through the beginning of spring training. So you can adjust them in the off season. And player development budget is some people play with this completely off. Some people don't think it affects anything, and it's just kind of a waste of time. My, you know, I do try to put a decent amount of money into the player development budget, and I don't have any hard evidence to back that up. It's only really anecdotally. It seems to me as if my minor leaguers progress more, you know, are better, uh, you know, they develop better if I bump up this player development budget. And where do you put it? It's so team specific, it's hard to say. I would say anywhere in the 15 to $20 million range, if you can afford it is good but if you need to lower it you can and again some people are going to disagree and don't think that's all that important of a thing or that it's basically meaningless i have not found that to be the case but i don't have any you know i don't have any study to prove that and then here we got a draft budget and an international free agent budget the recommended draft slot amounts 
You can make that uh, match your draft budget if you'd like. This is just the estimation of all your picks, how much they're going to demand in bonuses. And then the international free agent budget, you can spend $5 million per year on international free agents. So you can make that five if you want. But what I'm going to suggest you do, and this is one thing different from the original video, is think about putting these at zero. And it's not to say that you're going to spend zero dollars on the draft. It's just going to give you more flexibility with your overall budget. So look here, we have 8.5 million for free agents and 25.5 for extensions, right? And say we zero out this draft budget. Let's just say zero dollars finances. Oh, look, it went up now 15.5 and 32.5. So that seven plus million dollars we took out is now available for, for us to do whatever we want with. Now, you're going to want to keep in mind you want to save some money for when you get to the draft. You don't want to, if you use all of that budget room that's there, you won't have any money to spend on draft picks. But if you don't, if you have a zero dollar draft budget, that doesn't mean you have zero dollars to spend on your draft picks. You have whatever your money, available money in the current season, the money for free agents is. So all zeroing this out does, oops, I mean to go back there, is it just gives you more flexibility. So say you're planning to spend $5 million on an international free agent and you're going to likely keep that in your budget, but you zero it out and you're up $5 million more this season and also more importantly next season. So it just gives you more financial flexibility, but remember that you did it. Save the amount of money that you want for your draft, which is probably going to be around the recommended slots, and save money if you want to sign international free agents. I would recommend signing uh, you know, to the cap of $5 million if you can. But if you zero these out, you've just got flexibility to spend money elsewhere if you so choose. So the next important thing you want to do is go to the personnel page and you can see your minor league staff, just leave them alone the first year. They're all generally signed for just one year. If there's people you want to sign and you think are good coaches, extend them, but don't fire them and replace them when they're only there for one year because you're going to pay their salary anyways and then paying somebody else to do the job. So I generally leave these guys alone for the first season and, and extend the contracts of the guys I like. The one thing that you're going to want to consider changing right away, though, is your scout. So here's our scout here, scouting director Dan. I don't know this guy, I guess. I mean, most of these guys are real. Uh, he might be the Cubs real scouting director. I'm not, I assume he probably is. But uh, Dan Kant, Kant Robitz, sure. So let's go look at a player page for a second. I'll show you why the scout is so important. So if we're looking here at Ian Happ. And you see his ratings here and his ratings, overall rating and his position ratings. So all of these are what your head scout thinks. You see you have your head scout here and you have our OSA rating. This is a scouting report. This is not like MLB The Show or Madden where, you know, a guy's rating is a 50, right? And he's rated a 50. That's definitely how good he is. This is what your scout thinks. So your scout is going to have certain biases, you know, suffer from the quote unquote fog of war. And... You're you're gonna you're gonna want to have a scout that you really trust because you want to know that his evaluation of players is reliable, and you're gonna want to mix in your evaluation of players. You're not gonna want to just go based off of ratings and scouting reports. You're gonna want to pay a lot of attention to how they're doing in, with their stats, like how they're actually playing, right? Just like real life, generally that's how players are most evaluated, not by their rating. And I have a video out there. It's called How to Evaluate Players. If you want to look how to kind of mix and match how you evaluate based off of stats and, uh, and the scattering report. So anyways, have a scout that you really like. Let's go back to our front office here. And oops, wrong tab. I would say don't worry too much about the scouting director reputation. Pay more attention to his, his ratings here. So he's great at everything. Um, you can be outstanding, which is even better. This is a pretty good scout, though. I wouldn't have any issues having this guy on board unless there was just a really great guy out there to hire. I might think about getting rid of him. And the preference, you're gonna have a varying degree of favoring tools or ability. Long story short, simplistic explanation, favoring tools, you're gonna end up with more superstars, but also more busts. So favoring tools is gonna to favor guys with very high ceilings who might not pan out. So it's more like high risk, high reward. Whereas guys who favor tools, are going to more, or I'm sorry, favorability are going to more, you know, make the safe bet of guys who are more likely to be solid major league players, but maybe not as as big of a superstar. So you're going to need to figure out for yourself, you know, what do you what do you want to, what kind of players do you want? Do you want the solid players and more, you know, less risk, but also possibly 
more major league players come out, or do you want to shoot for the moon and go for superstars? I myself do generally do highway favors tools. That's that's what I prefer. So, and just a couple other quick things. If you're gonna um, if you're gonna look at your minor leagues, a couple things to keep in mind. Let's just go to like the double A team here. Um, one thing you can do, and I do talk about this in my player development video, but just say you want to develop, say um, Grant Fennel here, say you want him to develop into a better shortstop, right? And I won't get into how you evaluate if he can play shortstop or not. That's more in the evaluate players and player development videos, but you can go to actions here, set game strategy, and then you can force start at a certain position. So you want to shortstop. So he's not going to play shortstop every day, and he's going to be more likely to improve as a shortstop in the field. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And also, if you want really versatile players to come up, you might play them at diff force start them at different positions. You know, maybe do one for like three months and then switch it to another position. Maybe you want him to become a better third baseman or left fielder. So he he gives you more options if he's on your major league team. This guy probably isn't worth considering because he doesn't look like he's gonna be a major league player, but just something to keep in mind. You can make your players more versatile by force starting them out of position. So that's about all just for getting started with basic rules settings and strategy those are some of the i think important things to keep in mind but you know there's a ton to learn in this game i've got i've got some videos on a bunch of other topics and hopefully the sounds better on this one and hopefully there's a couple of tweaks i made to the information is helpful and you know as always if you have any questions leave them uh, leave them there in the comments all right